The use of backlighting and silhouette in Persepolis is, interestingly, used mostly when the war is referenced, perhaps isolating Marjane's own story by depersonalizing what happens beyond her. It also conjures up a more apocalyptic feel not present in the novel. The silhouette may also be indicative of the regime and the rest of the world's point of view. We see only faceless figures killing and dying, either in opposition to or in service of the regime. It also conveys the fear and suspicion of the time. The megaphone featured in this scene is a rather aggressive symbol. It looks like a two-headed axe and far above everyone else calls out the proclamations of the regime, conveying the implicit threat of violence to those who oppose. This close-up shows us a serious private machine in the face of her current social and political repression, as opposed to the public machine, who we see making a mockery of the regime's values and imposed self-flagellation. These two surveillance-type shots are another indicator of the political state, making it seem as if Marjane is being watched. The mise-en-scene of the classroom is full of indexical signs. We see a blank chalkboard and a closed book as the only non-essential items, whilst the teacher espouses the regime's policies as knowledge, all indicators of the repression of knowledge. Despite its animation, Persepolis possesses cultural verisimilitude in its characters and scenes, as seen here with the girls discussing music, which makes it all the more compelling. The succession of brief shots and panning here indicate the impending chaos of bombs, and silhouettes provide a story beyond Marjane. The black fade at the end tells the audience they have moved forward through time. The mise-en-scene of the supermarket with its paleness and desolate shelves is immediately communicative of the grim and difficult times, especially when we see the cobwebs lining the corners, which is a conventional symbol of decay. In the novel, this scene was quite different, featuring the two women initially discussing the influx of southern whores who were stealing all the food and men, which created a more complex political state within the civilian population, whereas here we have a simplified scene of people fighting over food. Yet again, when something occurs that is beyond Marjane's own story, we see silhouettes. Here, the camera angle clearly places the threatening man in a position of dominance as he confronts Marjane's mother, who was smaller than him and made to look so, reflecting her general powerlessness. Close-ups are generally used to convey characters' true feelings, and here we see all the men's rage as well as the women's fear and shock. This suppressive shot of the man as the car moves away, becoming part of the city pressing in around them, serves as the final echoes of the recent confrontation in the minds of both Marjane and her mother. Significantly, the black tone of this scene is much more prevalent than what is usually seen in Persepolis, aside from night shots, perhaps as another indicator of mood. Yet again, we fade to black to denote the passage of time. This sequence is comprised of jump cuts which further the air suspense by flicking from Marjane to what Marjane is seeing. The gradual pan across the cityscape encompasses the extent of the bomb chaos. To further emphasize the fear prevalent in the situation, diegetic sound is all that's used as Marjane and her family flee to the cellar, becoming silhouettes as they go. The sound used makes the scene seem more raw, despite the theatrical or as puppet-like imagery. The use of silhouette is again apparent and given its violent context adds additional ominous overtones to the sequence. The downward tracking provides a seamless transition between the stairs and the cellar and when combined with a black fade to pushes the viewer forwards within the narrative. In this triple close-up the bonds between Marjane and her family are both made apparent and affirmed. Here we see several establishing shots of the city all illustrating the subsequent destruction of the previous evening and setting the scene for the new day. Once again, silhouettes and war are conjoined. The merging of the street cleaner and the dead Statue of Liberty is perhaps symbolic of the clearing out and contraband of Western culture. It could also be a very subtle metaphor for the loss of personal freedom, which is forgotten in the face of basic human faculties like attraction which seems, in Marjane's case, to become attached to her own rebellion against traditionalist values and her adoption of punk culture. The novel depicts a significantly older Marjane at this point, making her rebellion all the more pronounced because she's younger. 
The non-diegetic sound of Marjane's voiceover describing her disdain for the Bee Gees in these establishing shots communicates very clearly her intention to incorporate her new opinions and discard the old. The towering yet hunched figures of the salesmen communicate to the viewer their illegality and entrenches the viewer in Marjane's rebellion. This tracking shot punctuates the moment where Marjane's intention is captured. This series of close-ups adds an almost comical action element to this dialogue and shows us Marjane's pertinacity. The two guardians are clearly in positions of authority. They literally surround Marjane. The mise-en-scene around her is drearily grey, making their appearance all the more stark and disturbing. This medium shot presents Marjane sandwiched between them, with the two women standing like guard towers beside her, further conveying her danger. This lighting emphasises the expressions of each character present by illuminating them to us and diminishing the background. The role of three was also present in this scene. The colours used here continue to stress Marjane's precarious situation, pasting her against a wall of black. This could also be a classic representation of good and evil, with the classic elements of white for the goody and black for the bad guy. The diegetic sound here complements the lying melodrama of Marjane as she tries to escape the Guardians by using tragic violins that eventually degenerate as she succeeds. Here we see the role of birds again, as with Marjane standing in the road between two symmetrical lines of trees and buildings. This close-up shows her intensity by placing her features in the foreground of a blank canvas. Notably in the book, Marjane listens to Kim Wilde's Kids in America, which offers a more transparent glance into her desire for Western culture. In this sequence, silhouettes again become apparent and the succession of shots becomes much faster. The speed scene here is a custom of action scenes. The use of backlighting enhances the violence of the moment by making the tanks, soldiers and explosions all the starker. The gradual evolution of sound from non-diegetic Iron Maiden to the faint battle cries and eventually nothingness makes the sequence all the more effective by throwing the viewer around the scene. The visuals here are very apocalyptic and chaotic, which is further enhanced by the tracking shot of the soldiers running across the battlefield, bringing all the violence into scope. These final violent silhouettes serve as echoes across the minds of the characters. This clip brings together several different eras of the book into one condensed passage, taking away much of the length of Marjane's evolution as a character. Her leap from child to teen becomes quite sudden and her exploration more wild, whereas in the book it was a more gradual, measured process. This gives the impression of a person far more impulsive and daring. Her evolution on film mirrored the evolution of Iran.